Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. What a surprise. What a reversal. Bitcoin is looking like it wants to shatter 20,000. And this morning we were heading to 17K, it looked like. The entire market rallied and everyone's searching for, for answers. And I may have found it. I may have found the answer and it could be because of President Biden's new view of inflation, new inflation data. Maybe that's why. Well, let's talk about this and let's talk about what else is going on in the world today. All right, let's get started. Smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to look. No, no. <laughs> Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Follow me on social media. Check out CryptoZeros.com and make sure you follow my other channels as well. Great content all around. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, can't complain. Can't complain. This morning, Bitcoin fell down to 18.2. But I did say I think, I, I, I thought that Bitcoin had a really good chance of just staying steady because we did fall down quite a bit to low 18s a couple times in, in September. And and we didn't break into the 17 Ks, right? But then, yeah, I mean, this honestly is a shock that we had such a good reversal, right? And look at how the U.S. market ended. Plus 800, NASDAQ plus 230. I mean, that's a 1,200 point reversal for the Dow. I mean, we were at like minus 400 at the beginning of the day. Now we ended at eight, plus 800. What, what happened exactly? Right, I'm gonna try to explain it, but this is one of the biggest turnarounds we have ever seen ever in, in history. DXY is down slightly, 112, that's good. We always wanna see DXY go down. But here, here we go. NASDAQ, S&P, largest reversals. Um, I, I don't know how far this goes back, maybe, maybe to the beginning, right? S&P 500, this is what, the fifth largest reversal? And then uh, NASDAQ, this is like the fourth largest reversal. So this, this is historic in terms of this huge reversal, right? But the, the, the common theme here, and it's not good, is if you notice the years when all of these events happened, uh, they happened during really bad recession times. <laughs> like in NASDAQ, you look at 2008, we know what happened in 2008, 2001, 2002, that was after the dot-com bubble, right? You look at S&P 500, you go back, you have the 87 market crash, you know, you have 2008, you got 2002, you got uh, 62, 90. I mean, there's a couple of, uh, the commonality is reversals tend to happen during bad markets, right? So we're definitely going through one of those times right now, uh, but it's good. It's good that we had a reversal, obviously, but what caused the reversal? You know, I, I created an earlier video for you guys, a recorded video mid-afternoon. I mean, everyone is still trying to figure it out. Is it just because it's pumptober time? We're going into November, December soon. We're going to see that Santa rally. Is it due to that? Is it due to the autumn equinox? Is it due to people just not caring about inflation anymore? Or is it due to just oversold levels? Who knows? But I did find one thing in particular, and maybe this explains it. Uh, the White House, they they released a press release, okay? And inside, there's a statement by President Joe Biden. And I wonder how much of this is actually from him. But basically, he does some weird math, okay? Which actually is true, but it's very misleading, that's why my thumbnail is, you know, this crazy numbers are going around. So what Biden claims is, well, inflation is really not at 8 point something percent. It's actually at 2 percent, which is what the U.S. wants all along. So basically, he's picking and choosing a few months. And then this is what he did. And someone someone uh, kind of drew it out perfectly. So what, what he stated was, well, last quarter, the last three months, uh, before this current quarter, 
uh, we were about 11% annualized inflation. And what he did was basically take, you know, the, our three inflation numbers from April, May, and June and annualized it, times it by 12, divided by three, came out to be about 11%. Okay, even though we know CPI wasn't that high, but he, he did some fancy math and said, okay, it's 11% before. But now you take Ju July, August, September, and then you annualize those three, well, then it's only 2%. So in fact, inflation has gone down. In fact, inflation went from 11% down to 2%. And it's predicted that it'll stay at 2% for the remainder of this year and, and maybe next year, right? So you could see, even though the math is legit, the math does show that, but this is ignoring this is just picking a few months. This is ignoring everything else that has happened over the last year or two, right? So all, everything else in terms of us being at 8.2% overall CPI and core inflation at, I forgot what it was, 6.6%, I think, this morning. It discounts all that. So did this, did this misdirection pump up the markets because people are looking at, oh, okay, we're actually at 2%. We're not at 8 point something percent. So everything's healthy, right? It, <laughs> I don't think so. Hopefully people didn't fall for this, but may, maybe it did. And look at this, we're, we're closing at 20,000 right now, right? The George effect is happening. Um, but yeah, you could see this, uh, air travel, eggs, insurance, transportation, chicken, milk, bread, everything has gone up tremendously year over year, even month to month, even today with this new data, uh, shows that things have gone up even more. But if you're using Biden's inflation data, uh, we're actually going down in a big way. We went down from 11 down to 2%. So we should be cheering that, right? So maybe, maybe this is why we rallied today because of Biden's math. I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take it. But you guys know the truth. <laughs> um, but uh, what occurred today uh, wiped out a whole bunch of people. That's for sure. $256 million of Bitcoin and crypto liquidated. Obviously, both ways, long and short, right? Obviously, more longs, but even the short sellers, um, they got liquidated too because they were anticipating Bitcoin go to maybe like 17K and then boom, Bitcoin goes back up. So both sides loses, right? This is why leverage is dangerous. Don't deal with it. Don't, don't try to overplay your hand because... Trust me, you will get burned. And the only people that win with leverage are the exchanges that offer them. It's really that simple. Um, all right, so a whole bunch of people got, got wrecked. But you know what? Um, overall, people are staying strong. I could tell. Even in depressing times, even this morning when it looked like all hope was lost, I could see people are not giving up. People are joining, I guess, the revolution, right? Regardless of the price, people are turning to Bitcoin, they're holding it, they're DCAing it, no one is, is leaving. And here's the interesting thing, look at Bank of Canada just released survey results of how many Canadians are actually holding Bitcoin, right? And the number is actually staggering, and this is going back to 2021, so who knows what it is in 2022, but overall, 13% of who they polled own Bitcoin. That's a huge number if you think about it, right? And maybe in 2022, it's even higher because of all the shenanigans that's going on. And this is broken down into various various other you know, categories. But overall, that is pretty amazing. And if you look at an age group of 18 to 34, 25% hold on to Bitcoin. Even 35 to 54, right, is 14.7%. That is enormous amount. This is very positive. And these numbers will only increase over time. Not just in Canada, in the U.S., around the world, 
And with the scarcity of Bitcoin and demand increasing, you know what? It's only a matter of time before Bitcoin breaks its previous high and heads higher and one day may even surpass gold and market cap. Okay, so positive, very, very encouraging. Now, what's also encouraging, and Michael Saylor is really, really, really looking forward to this, FASB, which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, said that corporations and institutions maybe should be using fair value accounting for measuring Bitcoin and other crypto assets. This would make it a lot more enticing for businesses to actually hold real Bitcoin because right now, accounting for holding Bitcoin sucks for corporations. If Bitcoin falls below at any point in time while you're holding it, below the purchase price, you have to count that as a loss. Even though it recovers, even though maybe it's just temporarily, you have to count that as a loss. Yet you can't count gains unless you sell it. So someone like Michael Saylor, that sucks because he can't count anything that's positive, only negative, even though overall he's down right now, I know that. But still, going into the future, as Bitcoin goes rises up, um, you know, this is, this is this is something that needs to be changed. And they're thinking about changing it in the near future. So this is also very positive. We'll definitely bring a lot more liquidity into the space from the institutions and, and big companies and banks and hedge funds and pensions and all that good stuff. All right. So that's also good. What else is good? Well, looking at some good old TA, whenever MACD starts to flip, that's when usually Bitcoin finds its bottom. And guess what's happening? It's happening right now on the monthly scale. MACD is starting to flip. So does that mean we have found that bottom at 17K? We've been holding at 18 for a long time. Are we finally ready to break out, maybe head to 30 or 40,000 by the end of the year? I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. Right? So, good stuff. Good stuff overall. All right. Uh, besides Bitcoin, some other good altcoin news. Uniswap raised $165 million in Series B funding. Um, basically they just want to, they just want more money so that they can grow and grow and grow. Uh, and they are growing. They're going to de deploy their Uniswap V3 on ZK Sync 2.0, which is a scaling solution. Surprisingly not on Z ZK EMVM from Polygon. They're choosing some other company, but regardless, they want to take, they want to, they want to keep moving forward. They are the biggest decks out there. A little scrutiny for Gary Gensler of the SEC, but regardless, they want to continue and press forward. And as more scrutiny comes to centralized exchanges, uh, more people will be turning to decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. So good for them. And overall, their TVL is still around $3.5 So pretty big, pretty big. Uh, Ether. Ethereum also becomes deflationary for the first time since the merge. It's bound to happen. There's still so much burning that's happening. The issuance has dropped 90%, right? And think about it. It's becoming deflationary right now while things are low. Imagine when things get hot and transactions start blooming. NFTs come back to life. More DeFi projects come to life. There's more people buying and trading, right? When th those things happen, Ether, Ethereum will be very, very, very deflationary. Just not there yet. But it's starting to happen already. So this overall is a very positive thing. And I've told you guys that uh, since the beginning of the merge. Uh, Binance also burns a half billion dollars with the BNB tokens based on their quarterly burning event, which measures how much profit they make. And they burn that much with BNB. So this is another reason why you want to hold on BNB because they will continue to burn and burn and burn until the overall surging supply is cut in half. And there is no new issuance. There's no inflationary uh, aspect to BNB. So also very positive for BNB. And then lastly, this is also positive. Nothing but good news today. Tether has gotten rid of all their commercial paper. You know, Tether, USDT is supposed to be backed one-to-one -one with cash. Turned out that they weren't. They were backed mostly by commercial paper, basically junk bonds from corporations. 
And you know, those could really become junk and go to zero if the corporation goes under. So there's a lot of scrutiny there. Now they have replaced it mostly with treasury bills, which should be as good as cash. But we know that may not be true because what if the U.S. defaults and they can't pay out, right? Even though that's very unlikely, but there's still a slight chance of that. Um, but regardless, it's better than having commercial paper backing uh, their USDT. So overall, this is a win. This is a win. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, overall tonight, it's a win. Bitcoin is leading the way. This didn't even refresh yet. Bitcoin dominance is up slightly. There's a lot of alts that, that didn't uh, catch up yet. But generally speaking, Bitcoin leads the way. Then the money flows in alts. So we'll probably see the alts catch up tomorrow as long as the markets stay healthy. Because I did mention there is a chance that even though today is up 800 points, tomorrow we could be down 800 points. There could be a chance of that. But right now, futures market is indicating no. We're going up tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, we don't see a negative 800 day tomorrow. Okay, guys, let's do some uh, let's do some Q and A. All right. Uh, Zach says my house smells like permanent weed and the man, the Mr. The man weed also says the same thing. I have never, ever, ever puffed before. So I can't tell you if I would enjoy it or not enjoy it. Um, all right. What else is there? Is the bottom in quite possibly? We still haven't retouched that 17 K mark. So we may, may have found that bottom and we are just recovery right now. We're in recovery mode and it takes some time. So as I said, BDC will hit 30K before ever touching 8K. I 100% agree with that. Um, let's see. What's your whole opinion about a crypto gem thing? I can't really share, but I will say this. I have the inside info and I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to spread any more FUD. But, uh, you know, what people didn't know was I was supposed to go on the show today. I was set to go on today and then last minute, Jeb reached out, kind of explained what happened. Then later on, I talked with Tim. At least I got a story from Tim. Um, so I know exactly what's happening and I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to say anything else until all this leaks out by itself and it probably will. Uh, Leo, Leo from CA, is that California? I think so. We're lettering CA hope, uh, hope to meet one day. Thank you. Thank you for being a member. For 13 months. Yeah, by the way, for those of you guys that are TA guys, you know, I drew this trend line, right, from all the way from the top here, right, from 69,000 down. Briefly, we broke through a little bit here, couldn't hold. Then this acted like a resistance. We dropped down, we hit it again. Acted like resistance. We broke through. Again, we couldn't hold. Couldn't hold here. We just broke out. And on a daily, we're on an upswing. So from a TA perspective, this is looking pretty good also. Um, so we'll see. But we have broken through that trend line many times. Haven't been able to hold. So the next thing is to see if we could break through some of these previous highs. For example, our last high was 20,500. That should be relatively easy to break, okay? So I think we could break through that. But the next challenging one will be right here, 22.7, 
Okay? Still, I think we could break that. And then next one, which will be even more challenging, is that 25K. If we could break through 25K, you know what's up, guys? Right here. 31.6. 32K. So let's see if we can break through some of these. We'll break through 20 and 22, 23. The 25, this 25, 2 will be important. If we can break through that, then we're in the 30s. Right? We still got two and a half months. Can it happen? Yes. Yes, I do. And MCT, that's, that's not the entire story. You heard it from one side, and I'll just say this. That's not the complete story. So right now, I, what's going on with Jeb seems like it's very one-sided that, that um, yeah, he was – well, he, you guys know what he said, but I'll just say this. It, you're just hearing it from one side. Um, Bid Moon, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not going to show up on the channel until things settle down. I did tell Jeb I will go on when things settle down. It would have been really weird for me to go on today when he just, you know, all of a sudden came back. Um, excited to see your progress on the house. You, me, both. Uh, I appreciate your support. I got a lot more videos. The next one will be interesting. The next one will be me shopping for very, very expensive stuff to go in the house. Uh, it is ridiculous how much faucets, tubs, lights go for. So, yeah, and then I have so much, so much progress has been made on the house this week. I'm there every single day, twice a day. Man, so much stuff. Another George sent a super chat. Hey, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Jose says, today did feel like the bottom is in. Three months of holding 80K while NASDAQ put new lows. You know, Bitcoin can only go so far. What you're left with are the holders right now. All the retail investors that came in, they left. What we're left with is the holders and, and some of the big boys, the big institutions like Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy and, and some of the other guys that's still holding on, the miners. I mean, no one's really selling anymore. So there's a bottom somewhere, right? And I would argue that it's 17K. What's our bottom? And I know we've been fluctuating since then, you know, having a hard time holding like 19, 20K, 18K. But the same thing happened in 2018. In 2018, when we found that bottom, we were just kind of there for a long, 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 long time, fluctuating a little bit until we broke out and never looked back. So... All right, uh, no, I'm still trying to catch up here. Oh, you need to watch the movie Money Pit. Never heard of that movie. Uh, what's happening with Ada? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening with Ada. Um... It's just kind of hanging. It's just kind of hanging there. Not a whole lot of movement. I mean, I know there's still a lot of development happening, but it fell down recently. It fell down really hard, and it's still below 40 cents. So, unfortunately, uh, it has not gained much recently. Ronnie, no, Jeff doesn't have beef with me. I don't have beef with him. I, I went on the show a couple times, went on Tim's show a couple times. I like everyone overall. I don't really have beef with that, any any of these other guys. Um, I think everyone, well, mostly everyone, not everyone. Some are looking out for themselves only. But most, most of the people that I've dealt with, have talked with, um, have gone on their shows, um, you know, most people just do it in their own way, but they're just trying to educate people and helping people stay in the game, really. So that's how I, I kind of see it. So. Uh, 
What's my favorite color? Probably, I don't, I don't really have a favorite color. Probably, I mean, like on cars, I really like white. Uh, I like blue in general. I like black. I don't have a lot of fancy colors. I got to say I like green, I guess. <laughs> uh, Crypto is my retirement. I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. Um, James Bruce. Uh, yes, to answer your question. Uh, Zach, uh, <laughs> go get yourself some premium stuff. Yeah, I prefer not to. Not to. Um, all right. Let's see here. Those altcoin daily bros, they're they're pretty tall, man. They're like six two, six three. They're quite tall. Uh, hey George, what do you think paying taxes on Celsius gains when, wait, when we don't have our own coins? Well, most people lost on Celsius, so you're not paying taxes on gains. You're gonna be paying, uh, you're gonna be utilizing them as deductions unless you were smart enough to cash out ahead of time, uh, and you made gains. Then yeah, you have to pay taxes. I mean. If you made gains, you made gains. Moses, that's exactly right. Uh, do you have solar in the house? I'm thinking about it, but payback with solar just takes so long. So, so long. So I'm not sure. And they look kind of ugly. Will Charles make the mistake of over engineering ADA to the point where it lags behind? I mean, you you could make that argument now. Everyone was making that argument. Solana guys, the the founder was I forgot his name. One of the founders, Solana, you know, kept poking at at Charles, saying that yeah, he's just you know he has slowed them down to a point where they don't have anything, right? And then, uh, and then that really backfired because look at what has happened to Solana since then. Uh, you could argue that Solana, I mean, Cardano is so slow that it's not going to be able to compete. But you know what? They're still sitting in top 10 just fine. They're still hovering there despite them not moving. They're still at number eight. So I think they're doing just fine. Um, and their ecosystem is still growing. They've got a ton of dApps. On board, they just had a big upgrade. So, right now, I think they're okay. Uh, Ashikor, apologize if I butcher your name. I stayed up after you streamed last night till seven in the morning and kept buying every dip for a lot of altcoins. Thanks for your advice. I'm glad to hear. Maybe you should not have bought every dip, but. The best time to be buying a dip is when it dips. <laughs> you DCA when things are low, right? So there you go. No, those, those Tesla roofs are ridiculously expensive. There's no way to, to get payback. You, you never recover that from savings from electricity. So getting a Tesla roof makes no sense. Now getting some Tesla panels with a power wall or two or three, I've been quoted, I need like four of them or something. There's a chance to make that back. But with the Tesla roof, zero chance. Even with all the incentives out there, you'll never make it back. Best advice ever, buy a dip when it dips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Um, Charles just has too much Twitter fingers since VCs don't back them. I mean, Charles, you know, as, as mature and as old as Charles looks, keep in mind, 
he is only 34 years old. So he tends to to have outbursts sometimes, you know. It's understandable because he's still a young guy. I still have a hard time believing that 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 I am older than Charles by a significant amount. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. Um so I think I think uh, people kind of overlook that that he's still a relatively young guy. Young guys tend to think, you know, they 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 know it all sometimes. Their ego gets in the way. Not to say that Charles is like that, but you guys know. You guys were young once. Um, you know, there's still a lot of growing up to do for a lot of people. So uh, I think Charles has done a very good job, fantastic job, in fact, uh, despite all the pressures, despite everyone, every project attacking him, saying all the stuff that you guys have heard of, like Cardano's never going to be done and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But I made that mistake before, you know. I thought the same thing in 2018, 2019, when Cardano could have been bought for one cent, two cents, three cents, four cents, all day long, every day. And I never took advantage of that. So I, I've always regretted that. Genius people age faster. You know who else age faster? Crypto people. Crypto people age extremely fast. <sighs> yeah. Um. Zulik, he is 34. Go look it up. <laughs> no one believes that because everyone thinks he's like 50s, but he he's uh he's 34. Uh, sold my 64 GTO DCA and BC. Sorry to hear that, but I think you made the right choice. AXO is going to be an amazing Dex and Cardano. Watch out for it. I think I've heard of it. That, that sounds very familiar. No, I've not heard of that. Axel Lotto Finance. I is this a meme coin? What kind of yeah. Wait, that's for, no, that's for Binance Smart Chain. So you're probably referring to some project that's not listed on CMC yet. Um... <laughs> Two parts. Will I ever have Charles on a show? Sure. I don't do interviews, and you guys probably noticed that. I did a little bit back in 20, 2020, maybe 2019, but kind of gave up my interviews. I've been thinking about it, doing more interviews. Just my whole setup, my schedule and stuff is kind of hard sometimes, but who knows? Maybe I'll start it. Do you think Doge will pump if Eli buys Twitter? Uh, well, that's already been announced, so no. But if Elon announces some integration of Doge with Twitter, then yes, it will for sure. Uh, selling the Evo for two Bitcoin, you get forty k with your Evo still. If you could, I mean, I'm not gonna say what you should do, but if if I was you. If I had two, no, if I had an Evo and I didn't have any Bitcoin, especially with Bitcoin being at where it is now, I would do that. I would do that. But you, you decide. I'm not telling you what to do. But I would, if I had an Evo, I would sell it for two Bitcoins. How do I feel about being D-Docs? doxed by celsius i don't have a problem with it because i have nothing to hide except there are trolls on twitter that's trying to spread fud because they don't watch my channel they don't know what i do but you know i've never promoted celsius you know i i've i've always been a black five guy right for better or for worse but i was a black five guy but for celsius you know i was the one that broke out all the news when when the fud first started 
you know, warn people. A lot of people thank me for helping them get out. I got out myself. I announced I got out many times, never hid that. And it's just funny that people are trying to spread FUD, saying, oh, look at, look at George, told people to hold on, and he got out. And no, I never told people to hold on Celsius. In fact, I was very critical of Celsius. And plus, I did tell people I got out. So that's the only thing. People right now, there's a lot of, this is why I stay off of Twitter, because there's so many people that just, for the sake of, again, getting attention or because they have nothing better to do, uh, they just want to spread FUD and they're just trying to attack. Now, some, some attacks are warranted, but some are not. And, and here's the thing, too. Um, what was I going to say? There was something else I was going to say. I forgot, but yeah, that's that. Um, oh, uh, I was going to say, the, the funny thing is people don't even realize what FUD means anymore. So the, a lot of the trolls that are trying to spread FUD think that when you say FUD, it means false. That's not what FUD means. You guys know FUD is abbreviation for fear, uncertainty, and doubt, meaning that there is fear, uncertainty, and doubt does not mean that equals false. <laughs> That's also the thing. There are so many people in this space that are spreading FUD, they don't even know what it means. So when you say there's a lot of FUD in the world, there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the world, does not mean there's falseness in the world. There is, but that's not what the definition is. Right, So that's also funny to me that people don't even know what the definition of FUD is anymore, and they're just spreading it like, like, oh, if you talk about, let's say, you called Celsius news FUD. No, that's not how you say it. <laughs> that's not saying that the news is false. You know, so that's also quite funny. But anyways, off tangent, uh, where is uh, Bitcoin at? Bitcoin is a little bit lower, 19.8, but it's still above that trend line. So that's good. Let's see where it is tomorrow. Uh, Aviator Lincoln or Palisade Calligraphy. I, I, all the Lincolns, I'll be honest, all the Lincolns I've ever test driven, I did not like. I hated the seats, all of them. The looks are okay, but they drove more or less like Fords. They didn't drive any better. The Palisade Calligraphy, if you watch my review video that I put out, you'll know how much I like that car. That is a fantastic, fantastic car. Uh, let's see. Hugs from Japan. Welcome. Welcome. It must be morning for you already. So the market must be open already. Any Cardano news? Not recently. No, I'm sorry. I did. I just talk about I just didn't talk about Charles, but I don't have any new updates for you on Cardano. Um, buy construction boots. To film the framing phase of the house. Yeah, I'm probably going to do that if they let me in there. It's kind of awkward. All these guys keep watching me every day. And they don't quite know it's me because, like, I drive a new car every day because I'm reviewing them. So they kind of know, like, my main car, my Tesla. So they kind of know to look out for that. But then now it's like all these random cars are showing up and they have no idea who it is. Uh, VR streaming, no thanks. No, no, no thanks. Uh, Jim, I was holding on Celsius, never cashed out. Am I obligated to pay tax on gains? No, because if you can't take it out and it's gone, then then there's no gains, right? So I would talk to your accountant about that, but I'm thinking that you could use that as basically you count that as zero. Now, if you do get something back because after the bankruptcy hearing, you know, I don't know if FTX buys them or something, and you do get something back, then you'll probably have to pay taxes on that as long as it's more than what you originally put in. I see VeChain almost every single USC fight. That's a good thing. I don't know if it's really helping them, but it's good that guess they're spreading word 
getting word out. Although I poked fun of Litecoin when they tried it, it did not help Litecoin at one bit. So I don't know if it's gonna help VeChain at all. So not sure about that. All right, guys. So today was an interesting day. Did we get saved by Biden's weird math or weird interpretation of inflation uh, data? Maybe, maybe. Tomorrow's looking good right now. Futures markets pointing upwards. Let's see if we can continue. Bitcoin being close to 20,000 again, obviously is good. All coins are lagging a little bit, but you know what? They'll catch up. Uh, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Tune in tomorrow, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.